Welcome to Freshman Film Room. Usual guidelines and disclaimers, we're putting together film breakdowns on next year's recruits, analyzing some strengths and weaknesses and potential fit from a sample of five or six games. You all know I'm not a scout at this point, but I'll mention it anyways. These videos are just primers, not definitive scouting reports. Today, we'll look at Ronnie DeGray. A 6'7", 220 pound forward from Colorado, DeGray comes to UMass from, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Woodstock Academy? This is the first I've heard of it. Anyway, DeGray was the last commitment of this recruiting class, having only made things official about two weeks ago. He was actually a big target for UMass during last year's recruiting cycle, but decided to reclassify and take another season at Woodstock before jumping to the college level, a move that I'd say paid off. You could very well argue that DeGray is the most versatile pickup for UMass in this recruiting cycle. At 6'7", DeGray's offensive skill set is really well-rounded. He can play on the perimeter and hit shots from outside as a pretty serviceable three-point shooter, he can take a guy off the dribble and get to the rim, and his post-up game showed some real flashes at Woodstock last season. With all that versatility, DeGray became a matchup problem for so many teams. When opponents didn't really have a genuine big to pick him up, DeGray ate that matchup alive in the post over and over. When teams did try to throw bigger guys at him, DeGray could just pull them away from the basket and either hit from deep or take them off the dribble. He was really good at hunting those matchups last year, either bullying smaller guys or dusting bigger ones, and that versatility made him one of Woodstock's best scoring options at close to 17 points a game. His outside game is pretty solid, but his finishing inside is really impressive. He doesn't quite have Trey Mitchell level footwork or anything like that, but at 6'7 and 220, he's already a physically mature guy for the prep level, and he used that to his advantage. He could back down most guys, and has some very nice touch on jump hooks going right and post fades going left. Whether that translates against bigger, more traditional bigs in the A10, who knows. But the foundation for a solid back to the basket game is there, and his ability to handle and score on the perimeter means he's got plenty of options. DeGray is also a very good athlete, both in terms of explosiveness and coordination. He can both run with the ball in transition and elevate inside and get to the rim when he needs to. That's part of the reason why he's such a good rebounder, snatching almost 8 a game for Woodstock this season. He's especially active on the offensive boards, you could frankly make an extended highlight tape of just his putbacks. He gave Woodstock a ton of second chance opportunities last season, and finished them more often than not. DeGray's passing doesn't jump out as his biggest weapon, but he's a pretty solid facilitator, and 3 assists a game for a guy who was Woodstock's nominal big man at times last season is a really solid figure. I want to come back to DeGray's decision to reclassify. Playing on that last Tony Bergeron Woodstock team two seasons back with Mitchell, TJ Weeks, Preston Santos, Noah Fernandez, that whole crowd, DeGray naturally wasn't the first option, and didn't fully have a chance to really shine. Here are his numbers from that season respectable for a guy often coming off the bench. This season, he was one of Woodstock's centerpieces. This was the result. DeGray might have been ready for college a year ago, but by reclassifying and taking another year to prepare, he made the leap from a solid guy to a standout with a little more room to work. I feel like I get a little flaky with defensive assessments sometimes, and I'm gonna be a little flaky today too. I have mixed feelings about DeGray defensively. The positives are pretty obvious, he's got great size and athleticism, and that's a very good base for anyone. DeGray was Woodstock's primary interior defender at times last season, and he could handle that role. He's a good shot blocker and can deflect and alter looks at the rim, and he's more than strong enough to hold his own inside. He also had his fair share of steals, with very active hands to strip guys going to the rim, or jump passing lanes in the press especially. I think there's also something to be said about someone versatile enough to be a rim protector in the half court and defend at the front of the press sometimes. I do think there are moments where he can look a little languid defensively. When he's locked in, he's locked in. But there are moments where he seems to float a little bit. You get some possessions where someone gets beat on the perimeter, and that's obviously not his fault, but DeGray should probably be the rotating defender, and that doesn't always happen. It can kind of be all or nothing in a way. Sometimes he does rotate and sells out completely for a big block, but on other plays, he doesn't quite get over to help. And while I do think his length and athleticism make him a versatile option, sometimes he's a little too easily bypassed by quicker ball handlers especially. I think he can and does stay in front of wings pretty well, but I think switching on to smaller ball handlers can lead to some trouble sometimes. That all really depends on role though. I think he's an especially promising interior defender, and as long as he's not asked to defend too many point guards, I think he'll be fine. So let's recap. Ronnie DeGray makes for a really versatile offensive weapon. At 6'7", he can hit from outside, he can get to the rim, and he's got a pretty promising post-up game too. 
He's a really good finisher inside, and he's a matchup problem against bigs and guards alike. He's a great athlete and a very strong rebounder, particularly on the offensive boards, and a solid passer to boot. DeGray brings some positive defensively with his shot blocking and steals, as well as his interior defending, and I think he's very physically mature for an incoming freshman. On the flip side, DeGray can float sometimes defensively. When he's engaged, he's really solid, but if he isn't, he can get a little languid on that end. He's a touch non-committal on rotation sometimes, and I think switching onto smaller, quicker guards can give him some trouble on the perimeter. One thing I didn't put in the film, but I'll mention here, he's a little right dominant inside. It's jump hooks going right and post fades going left, but he doesn't quite have that ambidexterity with his post finishing that can make guys like Trey Mitchell so unpredictable inside. The floor and ceiling here is both really simple and really complicated. At worst, he's a very solid rotation piece. At best, he's a contender for starting minutes, probably at the four, along with DeAndre Dominguez. The uncertainty here comes from the fact that I don't know what the hell Matt McCall is going to do with this rotation. He's got about seven guys to fill three spots on the wing. But for his part, Ronnie DeGray fits McCall's preference for versatility perfectly. He's got such a well-rounded offensive skill set with size and athleticism that makes him a matchup problem for anyone, and he's the final pickup that UMass should be thrilled with. Thanks for watching. You can follow the Collegian on Twitter at mdcollegian and at mdc underscore sports and myself at amin underscore tori, and you can find all of our content at dailycollegian.com. Special thanks, as always, to Felicia Cordy. Next week's episode will be the series finale, as we only have one player left to cover. Next time, we'll cover Mark Gasparini.